my fellow believers, greetings to this important announcement from the Rectangle Office, as we're calling it. These are incredibly difficult times, and I met yesterday with the staff team and then again with the vestry to talk about our plans for this difficult season. The first thing that we looked at was the Bible, and we looked specifically at the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42, which describes what a church is, and it says this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Uh, the apostles' teaching, that's simply sermons, and uh, from the Bible, of course, teaching, and it is a similar thing. Fellowship, which is the getting together. It's real koinonia, in fact, is the word that's used. It's a, a deep word for our connection to one another. The breaking of the bread is the Lord's Supper. And the prayers, the word the being important there, suggests some kind of liturgy or, or common prayer that people would say together and all knew. And what it says is that when they did these very ordinary, simple things that we always do, awe and wonder came upon everyone that was there. Well, our job in this moment is not to redefine church. The Bible defines what church is. Our job is to figure out how to do church in these strange situations that we're in. Uh, and so the purpose of this little note is just to let you know some of our plans. Our services, for example, will no longer be open to the public, but we will be broadcasting a live service each week at 10 a.m., uh, and then after that service, releasing a podcast of a staff Bible study as we look at the passage for the day in a bit more detail. The aim is really to provide something that feels like a service of worship with music that involves a sermon. So there is proper teaching from scripture and the podcast gives a sense of, of fellowship and uh, really tries to emulate some of those discussions that we have more naturally together in the narthex after church or even around the table at the adult forum. I know lots of you are asking right now about Easter, and it is a bit early to say exactly what the plans are, but uh, if we are able to continue doing what we're doing right now, our plan is to hold a Good Friday service live and then an Easter Sunday service live. We've even started to talk about some crazy ideas, such as if there's freedom of movement, could we even get people to gather in the church parking lot and remain in their vehicles or something like that? Rest assured, we have plenty of crazy ideas. We're not short of crazy ideas. Uh, and that is one of the ways in which we would quite like to get together and be an Acts 242 church, uh, albeit within our own vehicles, if you can imagine such a thing. There is plenty of opportunity for prayer at home. And uh, if you're wondering how to pray at home, can I recommend this? It is a Bible. Can I also recommend this? It is a book of common prayer and it contains all sorts of things that you can say and do with your families. As well as that, each week we're going to be producing a simple service bulletin like the one you would normally receive on a Saturday or Sunday. And that will be available to download from the church website so that you can follow along with those services. And uh, Ben Wolpe as well is going to be preparing some evening prayers and materials that you can use as a family as well or say on your own, knowing that there are other members of the church saying the same prayers at the same time. Children and youth ministry is certainly going to be difficult in this time, but each week uh, Tammy and Josh and Ben will be sending out materials to use at home. What we know from our research is actually simply contracting out the uh, training and discipleship of children to the church is a very ineffective way to raise young Christians. And most of what our young people learn actually comes from seeing what we do at home. And so this opportunity to dig in and become a part of your, your child's teaching and, and Sunday schooling is a real opportunity, we believe, to deepen the relationships that our children have with Jesus. And uh, also, many of the concerns that our children and youth are prepared to voice are concerns that we have as grown-ups as well, but we don't often want to say that we really feel them. So if you're wondering what God is doing in all of this, or whether it's okay for a Christian to be afraid, then all of those things will be discussed with our children and our youth. And I commend those materials to the entire church. If you're worried about pastoral care at this time, obviously that's very difficult for us and we are not able to visit with people, but we do have a plan to call every single member of this church 
both the vestry and the staff team have undertaken to make calls and we're rushing forward an advanced draft copy of our new church directory so that those in it can keep in touch with one another. If you're struggling and you're afraid and you're reaching what feels like the end of your life and you would like care and prayer for those final moments of this earthly life, please do contact me and I will be glad to come and visit you if by law I'm able to do that. I'll be there with you in that moment. I'd like to finish by talking to you about Dino's motorbike. Uh, Dino was a guy at seminary with me and uh, Dino was a colourful character. He'd been in prison several times for all sorts of things and had turned to Christ. But he still had some of the, the wild attributes of his former life and one of those things was a superbike, a Honda Fireblade. It was a wonderful machine and it had just one problem and that was that the throttle would stick open on the motorbike. For me this has been a controlling metaphor really for ministry for a very long time and it just feels sometimes like, like this job of being a Christian. We have a huge amount of control. We can control the gears and we can control the brakes and the steering and we can control all sorts of things. There was just one thing about that bike that we could not control and that was the throttle. And uh, sometimes it feels like we're not in control of that part of our lives and we're hanging on and doing our best. Uh, that is in fact always true. Nothing has changed. It has always been the case that we are not God and we are not the sovereigns of this universe. We have a responsibility to work in the best way that we can, but we don't have control of all things. The Bible says that God alone has control of, of all things. And uh, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, uh, verse 9, it says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. These plans that we're making, like most of the plans we made last week, might get unmade again very quickly. Uh, but that's only because we're not in charge. God is sovereign, God alone. God promises us in his sovereignty to take care of us in all situations. And in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, Paul, the Apostle Paul, speaks of his certainty in times of uncertainty. And he says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Church, this is a time when our neighbours are watching and asking questions and wondering what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it. I noticed that we had nearly 600 shares of our live stream last week. I noticed that our regular sermon podcasts have gone up by 400%. Uh, clearly, as Ben Wolpe said just a few days ago, we are not in survival mode. We are in revival mode. And so I fully expect the Holy Spirit to be doing a powerful work in our hearts and in our homes in this season. I'd like to close in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray in this situation that you would bless, anoint and protect our congregation, this body of believers that you've placed in Fox Chapel to be a light to this town. We pray, God, for the lost of this town, that they would come to know you. Maybe there's someone watching this message that has never heard of the things that we're doing in, in this place before. Father God, thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ, fulfilling 600 prophecies written 600 years before he fulfilled them, that he came as promised to seek and to serve the lost and to save the world by dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord God, that you have ascended and that you reign now enthroned on high, that you are sovereign and that the next step in your plan as promised, is to return to make all things new. We pray, Heavenly Father, for comfort and health and protection in these dark times. And Lord Jesus, that you would come. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Just one last thing. We praise God for the twin pillars of society. The word of God and cups of tea. So sit back, pour yourself a cuppa, Drink from your branded Christchurch Fox Chapel. Drink where if you have it available to you. Raise a glass, say a prayer, and I'll see you soon. God bless.